Okay, boys and girls, we started these form pictures last week. We started drawing our forms to create either our science lab or whatever we wanted to put our forms together to create. So we're gonna talk about how to take this form picture and turn it into something that is finished and complete and has some color today. So let's start with our first goal. Our first goal, remember, was to draw at least six forms in our picture somewhere. So I'm gonna count mine up so you can see where my forms are here. I have four cylinders sitting on the ground line here. One, two, three, four. So that's where I'm starting. And then I have another one, five, for my cube. I have two cylinders down here, six, seven. Then I have two half spheres right here. So I have eight, nine. And then in the background here, I have four really long cylinders, kind of like tubes. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I have a cone right here. That's 14. So I have plenty. I have more than six, so I am good. Now our second goal was to make sure we have that ground line. Remember your ground line starts at the edge of your paper and it hops over each form. So I have my ground line. I'm good with that. My next goal, remember, was to outline all of my pencil lines. So I was taking my black marker and I was going over all of my pencil line details, even the small details. So it looks like I covered all of that. No more pencil lines left. Now, before we add color, we're going to talk about one last thing. Um, I want you to take your big pink eraser and get rid of some of these extra pencil lines. Because if you look very closely at my paper, I didn't quite outline perfectly on the pencil lines. So I have some little pencil marks that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to take my big pink eraser and just go over my whole picture and try and erase all those pencil lines from left to right, top and bottom. So if I've erased all those pencil lines, then it's time to add some color with our watercolor paint. So you are gonna grab a watercolor paint tray from the table by the door, the counter, and you're gonna use whatever colors you like in your work of art. So let's talk about how to use the watercolor paint. I have my tray with my two paint palettes. I have my cup of water, and there's a couple different sizes of brushes at my, um, in my cup. So I have some small brushes and some big brushes. When we are painting a tiny detail or a tiny shape, we want to use the brush that has the small top. If I'm painting a big area, like the whole space of the table, I'm going to use one of these bigger brushes with the bigger top. So let's start by painting some of my details here. I'm going to start by painting some of my forms. So I think I'm going to use a bigger brush for that because these forms are very big. So I'm going to dip in my water first and then dip in whatever color I want to use. So maybe I'll use some orange first. Get a little bit of water in that orange. And then use my orange to start to paint this form. Now when I'm painting with my brush, I wanna make sure I'm painting with the very tippy top of a brush. So we can imagine that this brush is kind of dancing on its tippy toes. It is not scooting on its bottom. So each time, kind of like a pencil or a marker, I'm just painting with the tippy top to fill in these colors. If I run out of color, then I dip back in my water and I dip back in my color. Okay, if I wanna change colors, remember I need to take my brush, wash all that color off, then wipe it on my rag or my paper towel and get all that color off, dip in my water again, and then dip in my new color. Now I can paint my next form here. Now I'm noticing something about my watercolor paint right now. I'm noticing that it's a little bit thick. That means it's kind of covering up some of my dark black outlines. So that means I need to take my brush and just dip in my water and wash some of that paint away. And now I have some water on my brush. I'm just gonna smooth out that paint color with just the water so I can get it a little bit less thick. I can see those lines underneath. Now, if I'm getting a little bit drippy and my watercolor paint is dripping all over the place because it's too much water, I can take a paper towel or a Kleenex and just dab, dab, dab some of that wetness off so that we don't have colors running into other colors. So I can keep this paper towel at my table and use the fresh open spots to keep dabbing the spots. Okay, let's look at my tiny brush. Maybe I wanna paint a tiny detail like, um, maybe these tiny tubes up here. I'm gonna to switch to my tiny brush, then dip in whatever color I like. 
And again, on the very tippy top of my brush, I'm gonna paint these details. Okay, last thing we're gonna talk about is how to mix some colors. If I wanna create a new color, especially if I have some mixing beakers, it might be kind of interesting if I mixed a couple colors together to make it look like a nice potion. So maybe I could take my brush, get it really clean and dip in one color, and I can swish on this color and put a little bit of color in this mixing beaker. Now I can wash my brush off and dip in a new color, maybe blue, and I can put a few little dots or spots and I can have a potion that looks like it's mixing up to create new colors. So this is called wet on wet. I'm putting wet brush on top of wet paint and it's mixing up and it's creating kind of a neat effect in there. Um, I can also mix colors by just taking a color and painting with it all the way for the whole shape. And then take a new color and I can just mix it up, mix it up, mix it up by making my paintbrush go in a circle. So I can make some new colors by mixing two watery colors together. That created kind of a green color, but it's more of a lime green color. It's different than the green that's on my paint palette right now, like this green, this is a dark green. So I can mix up some different colors by mixing two colors together. Okay, lastly, if you've painted all of your shapes in your work of art, you're not going to have to paint the background around the shapes. We're gonna skip that, you can leave that blank. But the ground down below, I do want you to paint. So that's where you're gonna use definitely your big brush because this is a very big area. So taking my big brush, I'm gonna choose any color for my ground down below. And I'm gonna carefully go around all of my shapes and the shapes on the table down below here and make sure I'm painting this space down below. So again, you have to paint your ground or your table all the way around your shapes, but you do not have to paint the space around the background. Okay, let's get started continuing drawing and painting our pictures.